Welcome everyone to another episode of Let's Make a Game. In today's episode we're going to continue with the GUI as we want to do a few things with it. After today's episode we will have the possibility to choose from the category 1 the storage room. Once we choose it we have a ghost image where we want to place it and if we click on it we can actually place the storage rooms. Stage 1 represents the current building stage it is in. We can just drag and paint if we want and we can also right click in order to get rid of the ghost image and deselect the building mode essentially. We will be adding tons of scripts today but most of them are not going to be too extensive so don't worry about that. Thank you very much already in advance for leaving your likes on this series, I appreciate it a lot. But let's not waste any more time and dive right into it. Okay guys, to not waste too much time, I already prepared all of the graphics and objects. I also made the new scripts so we can get to coding right away. But before, I want to give you a bunch of explanations. First of all, I created a sprite menu rooms which consists of three images, the first one being storage, then room 2 and room 3, just as a placeholder. I also made a sprite for the menu ghost room, which is essentially the same, but it is slightly ghosty. Finally, I made a sprite for the room storage, which consists of four building stages, image 3 being the finished state. Next up, I of course also made all of the corresponding objects and assigned the right texture. I also already prepared all of the scripts which we are going to use in today's episode, which is the script menu rooms, which is very similar to the menu main script. We also have a script room assignment, script follow and snap, script global right click, script create room, script assign room sprites. These are all of the scripts we are going to use today. All of them are currently empty. For the menu rooms we are actually going to use an additional view which is going to be view 2. So I also added to the height interface function that the view visible 2 is going to be false in case we toggle it off. I also had to add in the global variable script the new one rooms menu buttons which is equal to 3 if you remember from this sprite we have 3 buttons. Okay so just that we are on the same page I show you once again what is actually happening. If we press category 1 the rooms menu is popping up right here in the view 2. If we click the storage then the view 2 disappears and we get this ghost image right there. The ghost image is of course this object menu rooms ghost. When we click on a grass tile or on a sand tile while we have this thing enabled, then we will, well, besides creating the villagers, also create a storage room. And of course it's going to be in its first stage, the villagers will first have to transport materials to the storage room and then build it actually. If we right click and this is of course the global right click, everything disappears. We can also right click away the menu and I think most of these scripts are going to be on either of these instances or the hard script. We'll have a look at that right now. Okay guys, I tried to assign all of the scripts as from menu rooms all the way down to the bottom. Let's have a look at it. The first one obviously being in the object menu main which we have done the previous episode. In the create event we still have the same thing but when we click on the object menu main then we want something to happen, namely the menu rooms to spawn. So that's what's going to happen on the left released event. Next up we have the object menu rooms which has its own create event which has the assign menu sprites which is a script we have made in the previous episode. Also on the left released we want the script room assignment to kick off. What this basically will do is spawn the ghost image depending on what GUI object we have clicked. Next up we have the object menu rooms ghost. Now right here I have just set the image speed to zero so it doesn't wiggle and jiggle around through all the textures. I have also added a step event with the script follow and snap. This will basically follow the mouse and make sure it is snapped to the grid of the game. Last but not least we have the left button which enables the script create room and this will finally create the storage room depending on what ghost image we have 
enabled. Last but not least, in the object room storage, we have on the create event the script assign room sprites. And with that, we have all of the scripts assigned to some object somewhere and we are ready to code. Okay guys, before we start with the new scripts, there is an addition we have to make for the screen assign menu sprites so that the menu rooms actually knows how many buttons it has and what it has to display. And I believe the easiest thing to do would be to copy this over. We're gonna change this to menu rooms. This one here as well, menu rooms. Right here we of course also want to change the global.rooms menu button and I believe that's all we had to change. Now also the rooms GUI knows how many buttons it has and what it actually has to display. Okay guys, now we have to take care of the script menu rooms. This is on the left click event of the menu main. So when we click on the menu main on the first button, the menu rooms should pop up. So let's give this a title, rooms menu, and the first one we're gonna program in is of course the storage. The storage is the image index zero. So if that is the case, we want something to happen. First of all, let's assume the interface is already active. We want to be able to toggle it off. So we're gonna first program in the disabling function. So if the instance exists object menu rooms, so if we already have that, then we want to disable the view visible of view 2. So that's a new view we are going to use. We're going to set that to false and we are also going to instance destroy. So whenever we disable the view 2, we also want to destroy the object menu rooms in the same step, basically. Now, actually for this to work, we have to make an addition. Namely, we have to say with the object menu rooms, only with those we want to do this. Otherwise, we're gonna destroy the main menu, which this script is on, but we want to destroy the menu rooms instead. Now, right here we can say if that is not the case, we want something else to happen. Namely, we want to create the menu. In order to do that, we're gonna once again call a for loop. We say i equals zero, for i is smaller than the global dot rooms menu buttons, uh, which is what we have placed in the global script today. Then we want i plus equals one. So that will result in three. So whatever we type in here will be repeated three times. So we're gonna instance create room width plus i times global dot tile size. And this time we want to have it below the main menu. So the main menu has the coordinate of y0. So this time we're gonna set it one global tile size lower. We're also gonna do the same thing with the view. Uh, but for now we have to finish this statement with object menu rooms. So that's what we want to create. Now of course we want to also enable the correct view, which is view 2, I believe so. So we're gonna say view visible of two equals true. And also we want to set the view in room. And this is very similar to what we have done in the previous episode. We're gonna say view of x view is two equals room width. That's where we want to start our view. Also the y view is gonna equal global dot tile size this time instead of zero. The view width is going to be equal to global dot rooms menu buttons times global dot tile size. So we can just go into the global script and change it and we don't have to worry about anything else. Also the h view of two is gonna equal global dot tile size. That's the size of the view. Next up we're gonna set the view on screen which is gonna be the view export of two equals zero. The view y port of two equals actually view h port of zero minus two times global dot tile size. And the reason for that, of course, is because we want it to be relative to our current resolution. So it should always be at the bottom. And this is what that will do. It will check for the height of our current resolution and then subtract two tile sizes, which makes it go above the current main menu. Next up, we want to set the W 
port to be equal to global.rooms menu buttons times global.tile size and view h port of 2 is going to equal to global.tile size. I believe that's all we had to do for this script. Yeah, looking good. Next up, we're going to take care of the script room assignment. This script is kicking off when we left click on the object menu rooms. So first we have to open up the main category using the main menu. Then we can click on the room, which in our example is the storage room. So let's make a title room assignment and the first room, of course, is the storage room. The storage room has the image index zero. So that essentially means whenever we left click on the menu rooms and the image index is zero, then this will happen. Namely, we want to enable the ghost placement. For that, we're simply gonna create an instance on the mouse X and mouse Y position. And the instance is of course gonna be the menu rooms ghost. Also, we want to set the object menu rooms ghost image index to be equal to zero. At the same time, we want to disable the view two. This step is of course optional, but I like it better that when I have chosen my category and the room I want to place down, that the GUI disappears again. So this is what is going to be happening here. We're gonna say with object menu rooms, we want the view visible of two to equal false. And also we want to instance destroy all the object menu rooms. Easy as that, that's all we had to do for this script. Next up, we want to do the script follow and snap. This is on the step event of the menu rooms ghost. With this script, we're gonna make sure that the object ghost is always going to follow and also snap to the tile grid we have going on. So follow mouse and snap. All we have to do here is set the X position constantly to be equal to mouse X minus global dot tile size divided by two. And of course this addition right here is just to center it on the mouse cursor because all of our objects have their zero zero coordinate at the top left corner and we want to make sure that this gets correct in this process. I'm also going to say mouse y minus global dot tile size divided by two. This script will already make sure that the object is always at our mouse position, but we also want to move snap it to the grid, which is of course a global tile size, global tile size grid. In other words, 64 by 64. But that's essentially it for the follow and snap. We can essentially use this script over and over again on all objects we want to follow the mouse in this manner. Okay, so now you have to imagine we have all the essential tools in order to spawn the ghost image. And now we want to be able to left click on the ghost image in order to create a room. So the create room script, if you don't remember, is on the left click event of the ghost room itself. Jeez, my head is smoking too. Don't worry about it, guys. Anyways, in here we want to check if there is no instance on the XY position object room script storage and of course with that we want to avoid rooms being placed over an already existing room and now we can basically just add statements for where we don't want rooms to be able to spawn or actually maybe we should do it the other way around we should specify where rooms can be spawned. Ah oh, well, I guess at the moment it doesn't really matter. Anyways, we're gonna also add the object ocean tile sets right here. So we don't want rooms to be able to spawn on an ocean tile set. And finally, we don't want rooms to be able to spawn on an already existing tree. The trees will have to be removed first. Whoops. So if all of these conditions are true, we want an instance to be created, namely the object room storage, of course. And since we have our ghost image always snapped to the grid, also this instance will be snapped to the grid. That's all we have to do for the create rooms file, at least for the time being. Once we add more rooms, of course, stuff is gonna get a lot more complex. 
Alright guys, we're almost done. This is the second to last script, the Assign Room Sprites, which is on the create event of the object room storage itself. This will make sure that we are assigning the right sprites. The reason we are doing it like this is because for all other room types we can use the same script in order to assign the room. So let's do that by giving it a title as usual, Assign Room Sprites. We're gonna set the image speed to be equal to zero as this is in the create event, we can do it right in the script. Here we are only gonna need one statement, namely if the object menu rooms ghost image index equals zero, then we want the image index to also equal zero. So whenever we have the ghost image of an index zero, then we want this object to also have the same index zero. Maybe we can later on make a switch argument out of that. But now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we leave this be for the time being until we really need it. So I'm just gonna comment it out for the time being and we're gonna leave the image speed to be equal to zero. So this script is rather useless at the moment, but eventually it will help us a lot. So we can save this off and get to the last script. Okay guys, last but not least we want to write a script called global right click. This is going to be a general script on the hard global right click event of course. And we want to disable certain GUI objects as well as, you know, just disable stuff that we currently have following our cursor and so on and so forth. So what we can do for instance is disable the view visible to false, so whenever we right click also the additional menus will disappear basically. At the same time we want the object menu rooms to be destroyed, instance destroy and we also want the object menu rooms ghost to be destroyed instance destroy and whenever we want something additional to be disabled we only have to add it to this list basically okay i believe our code is so far done let's test it out okay guys here we are in the game now this is basically what i showed you in the beginning of this video we can now click this category we can globally right click to get rid of of it. We cannot click any of the other categories because we haven't programmed them in yet. We can only click this one. Also room 2 and 3 is not working at the moment but the storage room will be working and it will make the view 2 right here to be disabled again and we will have an object to follow the mouse cursor and snap to the grid and when we right click on the storage object, the ghost image, the storage room will be spawned in its first building stage. We can also right click in order to get rid of this and have the mouse cursor free for something else. Oh guys, I think this has been a successful episode. There are a few bugs which we will still have to take care of. First and foremost, I haven't figured out this one yet, but when I want to toggle this view off again using the category button, then the view will remain visible, but the object will be destroyed. I'm not sure as to why that is, but we will figure it out eventually. Other than that, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to leave your likes, suggestions and feedback down below. Have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye bye.